we're going live, setting up my webinar. It says that I'm now live streaming, but I like to wait guys, just to make sure. Zoom is like giving me a progress bar. It's now re redirecting me to the live Facebook page. Okay, so let's start off. We're gonna assume that I'm already live guys. I wanna go so I can watch the stream myself. But while I do that, just want you to see teapot, teacup, tea's going in. That's, that's right, that's live tea being poured. What I find most, um, I've checked out my stats and what most people do is they come for the first uh, 10 seconds. People watch 10 seconds worth of video. And I was at a, a event where uh, the guys from Goalcast, Goalcast is like a, a group of, it's two guys who are amazing. And they were speaking uh, about like what makes a video go live or a viral and uh, talking to us about that, which was really, hold on, how do I mute this? I want to turn that off. Settings. Could you stop talking, Adam? Oh, I, I, there we go. Okay, perfect. Anyhow, they were talking about what makes a, vi a video go viral. And they said, don't begin your video by saying, hi, my name is Adam Quiney and I'm an executive coach and blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, okay, that stings. Got it. Good lesson. And I put my hand up and I asked them, okay, I get what I'm not meant to do. What do I do? Hey, Karen. Hey, David. And they said, invoke curiosity. And so I feel what I'm really doing here is serving that mission, drinking tea, pouring it live, talking about it the same way I talk about it every time. Maybe, maybe there's something for me to look at there. I'm going to stop talking about this nonsense. I'm going to drink some tea. The thing that's really fun for me is Chrissy's waiting in the wings, just sort of like, wow, if Adam's saying this garbage, there's no way I can screw this up. So that's really good tea today. Good Earl Grey. The Earl Grey is especially, especially, I can really taste the gray in it today. So um, I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes or so just about what's been going on in my life. And then we're going to bring Chrissy on and we'll dive into some coaching. Uh, and if those of you watching have any questions about that, please share those, please bring them into the chat. Um, that really, it provides us a lot because then we have something to talk about at the end of this. Otherwise, Chrissy and I will do our best to speak to what we saw happen, but it's more fun to have a third set of eyes instead of just the two of us. And it kind of lets you participate. It's just more fun for everyone. So um, the main thing I'm present to today coming into this conversation is really, uh, frankly, some heaviness in my being. It's been, it felt like a heavy week and um, it, it's felt that way for a few reasons. One, our weather outside is very, it's heavy right now. We're into the phase of Victoria's cycle where it's overcast constantly. And so you go outside and you're like, wow, there's a ceiling three feet above my head. And it doesn't necessarily inspire. Um, it just doesn't necessarily inspire. It can feel a little bit like you're you're cloistered or or kind of shut in. Uh, it doesn't make me want to go outside. I have to actually be intentional and create that rather than it being kind of free. I don't know if that makes sense, but usually when I see blue skies, I just think, "Wow, I got to get out there. This is gorgeous. I want to I want to be in the outdoors." In this weather, not so much. So there's been some heaviness in the air, and then. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback this week, most of it solicited, which is my preferred way to get feedback when I say, please give me feedback, but it's been challenging feedback to receive nonetheless. And I would say feedback at the best of times is challenging, but anyone that's working with a coach or doing any kind of um, self-work, for lack of a better word, uh, probably knows, you know, it can be challenging to see our blind spots and to really look at them in, in um, the glaring light. And, uh, and so that's, that's been there and it's awesome. The feedback is exactly what I've been asking for. It's what I want. It's, it's what is next for me to take on in my life. And it's also hard because there's a part of me, a really human, a really, a really, um, I guess I would say authentic, genuine part of myself is like, fuck, why can't what I'm already doing being enough? Why do I have to do more of this? The answer is it is enough and I don't have to do more of this. And below how I feel is what I'm like on a deeper level is what I'm committed to. And what I'm committed to is really making a difference in the world and really being a clearing for inspiration in the world. And what's being put in front of me is what's next to actually 
scrub myself, uh, to, to broaden my conduit, to allow more of that to flow through and in partnership with me into the world. And so often it, it's felt this week a lot like, um, uh, like a sword being made and you shear off the impurities and you put it into the, the burning hot coals or molten lava. <laughs> I don't know. However you make a sword, I'm pretty sure it involves coals and molten lava. Um, and then maybe some metal. Uh, and I've very much felt like I'm in the coals and the molten lava. So uh, that's what's been present for me. Uh, it It's not free, I notice, to just like, oh, yeah, I'll take on the work. Why wouldn't I want to be a better person? Because it's fucking annoying. <laughs> it's fucking annoying doing the work. And uh, and I have to continually choose in. So that's been a big part of what's there for me this week. Um, I've been reaching out and getting a lot of acknowledgement from friends and people that uh, love me and that I love because that's important. It's easy to, when things are heavy, it's easy to fall completely into it. And so I'm, I'm actively seeking acknowledgement, a reminder of who I am for the world, and also um, still allowing myself to feel what there is for me to feel. Heaviness, love, all that sort of stuff. Also, check that out. That's right. That's the manuscript, the finished laid out manuscript for the book that I wrote, who knows however long ago, Too Smart to Know Better. Uh, I found one error. Look, this is about, so we've already gone through editing. Too smart to know better. Where's the first error? Literally the first word <laughs> inside the book. T-O, smart to know better, not T-O-O. -O. Anyhow, um, that's kind of cool. Uh, reading through this, we're, we're getting really close to publishing. Of course, I want to change so much of it now that I'm reading it with new eyes and, and, uh, and new thoughts and, and having created a bunch of breakthroughs since I wrote that book. And I'm allowing it to be exactly as it is. Um, huh. I, I think your name is pronounced Asia. And if so, Asia, I'm with you. I, I often have this fantasy that one day, one day, if I do enough of the work, then I will be done with the work. I'll, I'll have gotten it completely. And the path of transformation, I really think is, it's, it's a, I like the metaphor of it being a mountain with no top. So we're just always climbing and we better get used to climbing and we better learn to love it because that's the work. And uh, yeah, and the truth is if, if I did get there, I'd be bored, I'd, I'd choose out eventually. So anyhow, you guys aren't here for me, you're here for the special celebrity guest star, her ladyship, Chrissy, who I'm gonna bring on now. Chrissy, come rescue me and the rest of these people with us from my blathering. Peace signs. <laughs> What's up, how was that? I'm curious, how was that for you just sitting there listening to me go on and on? I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what what I got to see though was you talking to yourself first trying to figure out how to put it all together which was beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I was I went away with um with three friends uh not this past I don't know uh, uh, maybe two weekends ago and one of them said <laughs> he came down one of the mornings and he said wow you know what I noticed today you talk to yourself a lot, Adam. And I was like, yep, true that. Well, That's welcome, okay. welcome her ladyship, Chrissy. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for being with us. Um, you've had some awesome stuff going. Do you want to share a little bit just about all the craziness that you're creating in your life right now? Sure. Craziness, awesomeness. Right, yes, it's, it's a bit of both. Um, so... Gary and I are property investors. We real estate investors. Uh, we have been for, well, he's been for 10 years. I've been for seven years. And so what the hell? We decided to buy, um, uh, I think it's 1.5 acre waterfront property, which is a, similar like a little resort. It has a pub, it has houseboats, it has speedboats, it has cabins, it has houses. And so with everything else that goes on in our world, with me being a coach, him being a teacher of real estate, we thought, this is fun. So that <laughs> kind of, it's kind of what we've taken on. And so, yeah, it's just been, it's been a lot of, as of September 1st, the, the family who had owned it for 30 years went back to beautiful Victoria and yes, yes. And, um, took all their workers because all of them are family. So 
it's been a bit overwhelming. Gary and I have been completely hands-on throughout the summer, learning the business for sure. But um, we want them back. You know, it's, <laughs> like, it's like a blanket of security that has left the, the nest. And we're just like, wow, okay. So last night we had a boat breakdown. with just the starter went on it. They couldn't get it started. It was just like one little button fixed, but it's just those little tiny things. It's like, I don't know how to do anything on a houseboat <laughs> except clean it and drive it and drink beer on it, whichever. Right. So those things sound great. <laughs> I know. Right. So it's, um, and then along with um, the whole family from England has been here and um, they'll be here till the 23rd, which they're great. I've put them to work. They're part of our family <laughs> workers now. <laughs> yeah. And Little so did they know yeah. Come stay with us. We got a place for you. Yeah. I've been videoing and sending it back to England saying, if you come, this is what's <laughs> expected. So it's good. But, um, and then same with just my, my business itself. I have this month alone, I have four speaking gigs that I'm getting ready for. I have a retreat in November that I'm putting out. I'm flying to Nova Scotia right after or right oh, before so the jealous. retreat. I know. What are you doing in Nova Scotia? I got asked to speak for um, a three day conference for uh, Canadian Fairs Association. And so I have. Um, I'm doing three different presentations there. And yeah, so it was actually one of my goals to get to. To, to buy a pub. Yeah, to, to buy a pub and do all this. Have believe and fly across to Nova Scotia. Yeah, so, and it was kind of crazy because the pub was completely spontaneous. It was every 30 years, this thing comes up for sale and it's always been in our back of our heads. And so when serendipity says yes, then we just kind of went for it. So it's kind of been put in there in the mix of things so yeah it's yeah. crazy you like if i took owning a pub out of that and you just shared everything that you were up to i'd be like holy cow that's a lot of stuff <laughs> and then there's like why don't you become the own why don't you become a land baron yeah <laughs> right like yes run a den of inequity and vice which i assume is how you're running this yes so uh -huh. now now everyone's like, oh, you can do retreats at the Fish and Duck Pub. I'm just like, maybe we can. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have to clean it up a bit. Pile <laughs> some more on. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. Cool. So yeah, that's where um, that's what I've been doing. Just a few things. Sounds like a lot. It's. Uh, I mean, that gives a lot of context. You know, like you're not the sort of person who's like, oh my god, nothing's happening for me. It almost sounds like, well, the, uh, I just hear there's a lot going on right now. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, what, what should we, where should we put our attention for this conversation? I think for me, what um, I sh I've been looking for clarity on myself is of course, with this, this um, fish and duck pub coming into play, I have a, a company that I am running as well, which is my own company, which is my coaching company. And so where I'm sitting with that is um, how to balance, mm. how to balance it and um, how to even combine the two. Like, of course, there's people with many ideas and still I'm the one who has to do the work on it and create it because I don't by any means want to give up my coaching business yeah. because that's not, that's not what, um, well, it's just not part of who I am either because I really enjoy it. Um, and at the same time, I have said yes to this crazy opportunity, which in my head, I like in my soul, I believe I can make both work, but I don't like to do things half ass on both sides. Mm. And so that's where I'm sitting with and how that looks. And it just, it, it's been eating at me a bit. And I think that's where the overwhelm comes in. Uh, so that you're yeah. feeling kind of overwhelmed too? For sure. Got for it. Sure. Um, for everyone, I'm just going to talk to sure. the rest of the people yeah. for a sec. <clears throat> I'm writing notes. I've asked Christy, Christy if it's okay. I'm not playing Candy Crush or video games or doodling crappy cat drawings here like Jonathan would. <laughs> um, one thing I just want to check in, like I, when you, when I heard you say, um, <laughs> Karen, by the way, is saying, do things with your whole ass always. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a good uh, cross stitch or something yes. like that. Yeah. 
Um, when, when you talked about like coaching and I heard you say like, I enjoy it, it felt, it occurred like there was some emotion that showed up with that. Yeah. Cause I don't want to give it up. Oh, got it. And is that like present? Is that there for you a little bit? Like a fear that you might have to, or a concern? It, it wasn't until, oh, hmm. Carrie asked me if I was going to. And it wasn't in my thought to do it. I was just going to do it. Do it, meaning? I was just going to do both. Mm, yeah. And I don't, I don't, this isn't Gary saying I have to or whichever, because he's supportive in all aspects of whatever I do. Even if I said, no, I'm not going to do the pub, he'd just hire somebody else to do what I was going to do anyways. There's no, um, but in my head, I'm like, well, well, if he's asking that, is there a possibility that I can't? Mm. So self-doubt maybe. Well, at least we've labeled it. Yeah. Just self-doubt yeah, there. There it is. Just pull the book out. How yeah. do you solve self-doubt? Why doesn't that work? Yeah, exactly. Got it. I think uh, my ovaries are sensitive. I don't normally cry. You know this, Adam. Right. Hardly ever. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. So. I mean, I got, I, I got even just hearing you talk about the work you do as coach. Well, yeah. I mean, even just if I look at what you're, who you're being in the world, the stuff you're taking on, you don't, well, I wouldn't, as much as I love Nova Scotia, I would not be flying across this massive country <laughs> that we live in to do something that I don't love doing. And, uh, and I really got like, there's a lot of, um, you really care about that work. Right. So it makes a lot of sense to me that there'd be like, you know, even just the thought of that you might have to give it up. It makes me a little right. too. I want to acknowledge that. Um, that drives something up. Like yeah. there's some, some realness to that fear and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Got it. So thanks for sharing that. First of all, uh -huh. um, I'm present to the emotion and my sense is you're, you're good with it. Like you don't yeah. need any. Okay. Awesome. Um, so clarity balance. I love these words because they're what do people always want? Right. If I just had clarity and balance and I just addressed like self-doubt and maybe a fear of failure. <laughs> Let's make an advertisement on that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. And maybe some funnels too. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, but I, I feel like I need funnels yeah. of some sort. So we'll clarity, balance, the email. Let's, say, yeah. <laughs> let's say that we got those, like what, what would that look like to you? So how, how would that actually occur in your life? If you had those things. So for, for me, I know that just because I've been working all summer at the fish and duck, learning the business with Gary and, um, and I see the, the quiet times. And so for me, I can see how I can structure coaching calls within the times that I'm at the business, like at the pub business, at the, you know, the, the property so that I can create both sides of it. What I, um, and, and then I know how much time I've put into creating clients as, as do we all as coaches, how much time we put into creating clients. And so it's um, in a perfect world, I get to do both. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's really how I see it is in my winter months where the business is dormant of the fish and duck is dormant. I can create my clients and, and create and do my speaking and engagements and do my retreats that I absolutely love and personally need it fulfills me wholly that I it kind of like I see it being both sides of it. I think in this moment, I'm just so overwhelmed with learning the new business, creating systems, putting everything into an online presence so people can book houseboats online, plus all the stuff that I already had on my plate because I didn't have the pub. And so it's, um, to me, it's just, it seems like such a big task, like a mm. audacious, huge, one of those huge audacious goals that I 
am shutting myself down to possibility, if that makes sense. Uh, well, you tell me, like, what does shutting yourself down to possibility mean for you? Um, I'm taking the easy way of just let's focus on the pub. Hmm. Because the co creating clients is not easy. Creating, making the time to reach out to five people a day is not, it's, I shouldn't say it's not easy. That's the wrong, that's not true. Connecting with people is easy. What is is hard is the time commitment that I put in play for myself and sticking to my plan, I guess, would be. Well. <laughs> Give it to me. It, it was so great. Yeah. So like, uh, it's really cool. So you're a coach. And so there's this danger that happens when we're a coach, which is we start trying to coach ourselves and like, yeah, and, and catch our language, which is on the one hand admirable. And then on the other hand, totally screws us up because right. um, the Zen adage is before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Make sure yeah. I've got that right. Chop water, carry wood, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. And yeah. so the, the premise of that is like, you're still a human yeah. and enlightenment doesn't change that. And, and so um, what I heard was, you know, maybe actually part of what's true for you is it, it doesn't feel that easy right now to create clients. And I don't want to be right about that, but I just, that's the, the languaging I heard you say. And I just am curious, like, is that how it occurs? Is that a genuine way that it feels? That's how it feels. Correct. Got it. Okay. Doesn't feel easy. So I'm going to speak to these people for just a sec. Okay. Yeah. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to break, I'm going to break the fourth wall. I read about this in a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so that we can kind of like bring people in. Are you all right if I do that? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So for everyone watching, first of all, thanks for everyone that is here. It's awesome to have you with us. Um, I don't know where we're going to go. And I have some ideas about what might be there with Chrissy and, um, and what's showing up and I'm actively actually setting them aside. There's I'm, I'm keeping them like, Hey, maybe this is a thing and I'll just keep looking for that. But I really want to make sure I'm not right. That that's what Chrissy needs and instead get curious about what's going on. Okay. I'm back. <sighs> um, I notice that my breathing is a little shallow, just holding all of this. So will you take a breath with me just so that we can kind of, give ourselves like a little bit of space to be with all of that, all of that. It's shallow because I'll cry. <sighs> yeah, I made as well. Mm. Yeah. It's heavy. Just a couple of people with big hearts feeling heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad it's not just me feeling yeah, heaviness today. <sighs> yeah. Thanks for being present with it. I get that it might be easier to just get really busy. Well, that's usually what I do. So I'm trying to mind it. Mm -hmm. Hard to imagine you doing that after I you shared everything you've got going on. <laughs> so how let's, let's take all of the stuff off the table. How do you want this to look? What's like the configuration that you'd like to be, coming from like I heard you say um there's the quiet times with the pub so I could kind of like you know squeeze stuff in that way but how actually would you like this to actually be in your life if you could design it all from scratch well I would to me I'd like to just um I'd like to have a full-time coaching practice and take the time to set up the pub exactly the way it needs to be to run efficiently and with systems and everything so that we have employment that take care of the everyday things. And because I am the backside, the back office, the IT person who does everything and, and, and yeah, I just, I would like to be able to just man it from the backside and get dividends. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Sweet residual income. Right. And so 
in time, I know that is, that is our goal. And um, in the next year, if I was to look at short term, I, I do, I want to create and make time for all of it. And mm. that, yeah. And that thinking messes with my head. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it's too much. I'm going to talk to these people again for just yeah. a sec. So, well, I'm going to, I'm going to speak to you actually, Chrissy, but for the benefit of everyone. Yeah. So there's kind of like two things I'm present to in the context of where we are in the conversation. The first one is as coach, our job is to get people yeah. and to coach them then to leave them. And we all struggle with various parts of that. So like up to this point, I'm really clear, like, Oh, part of what's there is just to get your world. And yeah. like, at least for me, part of that means allowing myself to feel some of what's there for you and to like, it's hard to get it just by saying, I get it, you know, right. to really get it. Right. Um, and the other thing is it's pretty clear where we are. And now we're trying to figure out like, where does Chrissy actually want to be? So what we tend to do is like, here's where I am. And then here's what I can have given where I am instead of like, here's where I, am. so that would be like, here's where I am. The pub demands, I don't know, like yeah. I'm just making up math for you, but probably 96 hours a week of your time. And then sure. yeah. all of this other stuff. <laughs> Therefore, what can I kind of create given this schmozzle over here rather than here's where I am and here's where I want to be full stop. Now, how do we get from there to here? So, so I heard kind of, you want a full-time coaching practice. Right. Um, and you want, uh, I might get this wrong. These are kind of my words, so correct them. Uh, but something like you want the pub to, to kind of go the way it's going to go. Like you want that to be an expression of yourself. You want that to be like created in the world as well. Correct. Okay. Got it. So, well, let's flesh that out. So we're kind of looking in this area, right? Clear on where you are. And then let's, what does a full-time coaching practice look like? Like, let's assume that you have this pub and it's a going concern and you have a full-time coaching practice. Like how many hours a week are you devoting to that? Well, I mean, now I put, um, I put at least 30 hours a week into my coaching practice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's here, right? Yeah. Where we currently are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're asking where I want to be? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's, let me use a metaphor. And thanks, well, Rachel. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it was funny because I just, I just kind of chuckled to myself because I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to work 30 hours. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, let me give you an yeah. example here. So we have this wand. This yeah. is the older wand. It's a very powerful wand. Okay. And I hand it over to you and I'm like, Chrissy, you've got this. Because I am elder than you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No need. No, easy. <laughs> so we hand you this wand and we're like, with this wand, you can do anything you want. You can have yeah. whatever you like. I do this to people all the time. Most people have this magic ability to break my wand because what happens is I give it to them and then it fulfills a really shitty dream that they have yeah. where it's like anything you want. Well, okay. I work 45 hours a week. And uh, I eat dinner with my spouse twice a week. It's like, really? That's so, what you use this for? So, you know, it just came for me is me. in my head. I think I have to work a lot of hours in order mm -hmm. to be successful. Tell me more about that. I don't know if I in can. my head, I have to work a lot of hours to be successful. Did I hear that right? This is how I was raised. Me too. Yeah. Say more if you're willing. If I can. <laughs> <laughs> Mucus is allowed. On yeah, this. Well, um, well, I'm just born and raised on a farm. You just, you don't stop working. Mm. I, yeah, I just, I like money without working. So <laughs> it's just not... Yeah, it's just, I feel like if I'm not doing something, I'm being lazy. Mm. So how is that? 
that makes, I can relate to that a lot. You know, like I kind of learned I'm not enough. Would right. that be the simplest distillation? And well, guess what? If you're not enough, do more. That's the cure to that fundamental defect of my character. Right. But somewhere was lost when I've done enough because there isn't enough, right? Right. So I can relate to it. Tell me, tell me more um, like how that is playing out currently. Well, I'm just always, I don't want to say busy because I hate that word, but I'm just always finding things to do or take on or, you know, it's just that stupid saying that's been, everybody asks me because I'm busy so they know I'll do it. It's that saying, if you need something done, ask a busy person. Like that's what people come up to me and say, oh, well, Chrissy will do it because we know she's going to get it done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not a yes person by any means. I say no a lot, but there's certain things that intrigue me. Like I, I love this pub challenge it challenge. Like it's a game, but I guess it kind of is it's a money game, but, um, but I do, I like the challenge. I love being around people and everything like that. So it, it does excite me. It does excite me to see what we can do with it. And, and I still want to coach. Mm. So maybe I coach people on the way to the, to the houseboat before they get shit face drunk. I don't know. <laughs> well, it'd be an interesting funnel. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> um, okay. So one, I'm going to keep speaking it to you, but basically like, yeah. here's what's going on in the conversation. So, um, there's kind of like, here's all of the stuff I've taken on. And then I heard you almost go back to like, here's where I am and I still want to do this thing. So maybe here's how I could slot it in. Interesting. Maybe I could coach people on their way to the houseboat or something yeah. like that. So, and, and what that occurs like is kind of trying to like, what, so what's the solution? Like we kind of keep going to what's the solution. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I want you to get, I want to normalize that for you as a fellow solution creator. Right. Um, it's like, great. That's the problem. That's what ails me. Like, how do I solve it? How do I solve it? It's just like where we want to get to and kind of the thing for everyone. And my hunch is that you're pretty reliable in your life to provide that to people. Like if we need a solution, we can come to you and mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to hook us up. Mm -hmm. Would that be fair? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So thanks for being that person. First mm -hmm. of all, thanks for having that strong suit. And like everything, our strong suit represents a range that we're really awesome in. But I'm hearing that some of what you want lies outside of what this range allows for. Correct. Okay. Um, the other thing is when you got to like, oh, I have to work a lot of hours to be successful. I kind of got like, oh, there's the thing we're talking about. And it's almost like if we were to create balance or clarity or flarfig nugent, whatever the thing is with that still in place, it's, it's still going to be a function of that underlying story. Yeah. Does that make sense? True. Okay. So that's kind of where I feel like there is for us to explore a little bit more like, Hmm, have to work a lot of hours to be successful. So what does that look like on a daily basis? Like you're working 30 hours a week on your coaching practice. Mm -hmm. How many hours, like, let's just get the hours. What is the implementation of that story? Well, I, I mean, honestly, I'm doing something from the time I wake up. And that means like six in the morning until probably 11 o'clock at night. And I mean, yeah, there's, you know, there's, lazy times I'll quiet my head as you had posted the other day about all your numbness things that you got rid of in your life I can do that because I need to shut my head down but mm -hmm. um yeah like easily easily probably about 16 hours a day wow. we're going full on wow I'm present to your strength Chrissy like that that really demands something. It really is a, is a testament to the strength and the commitment you are. 
to do that. Um, so just checking in. Anything more you'd like to share about that? I don't know any different. I just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it probably gets a lot done. Like, I imagine that you complete, like you move a lot of things in your life forward. Uh -huh. I got it. Before I ask you the next question, I just want to read you some of the comments that people are sharing. Sure. Are, um, uh, Emmy says, right here with you. Emmy Drain, right here with you, Chrissy. So thanks mm -hmm. for sharing what you're sharing. Other people are getting something from it too. Just want you mm -hmm. to really get that. And Heather is saying, God, G-A-W-D, God, <laughs> I can relate to Chrissy. Work harder, do more, never enough, always. Yeah. And then you will die and have blessed relief. Yeah. Except you're going to be arranging the graveyard and like making sure that your coffin looks all nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So what's the, um, what's the benefit of this? Like what's the payoff you get from this kind of underlying story? Feeling of importance, feeling of um, accomplishments. I'll give you the positive first because there's a lot yeah, yeah. of negative that's coming up too. Um, um, so there's feeling of being needed because people do come come to me and yep. and want me for what I do and how I show up. Um, yeah. yeah, those are some of the things that really stand out, like that are easy to come to. Got it. Feel important, feel accomplished, yeah. feel needed. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And I heard you say like some, there's a bunch of the costs that you're present to. What are those? Yeah. Well, I'm drained all the time. Mm. So it was interesting because you did, um, you and Bay with uh, the Forge, your, the group, had us go and talk to nine different people and ask us what who who what happens with them when we show up in the room. And every single person said, well, not every single person, but six out of nine said energy. And I'm just like, oh my freaking word, no wonder I have none. Like you guys take it all. <laughs> <laughs> Their fault. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, so it's just, I'm always, and that just kind of, it showed, it was my reflection on that is that I'm always on for everybody else. Mm. Uh -huh. And what's the cost of always being on for everyone else? Well, it's just people don't understand me when I'm, I'm not. And then I get, I get you're cranky, you're a bitch, you're this, you know, not, I mean, not always, but I mean, I can, Sometimes I, I don't give myself permission just to be without energy around other people. Mm. So it sounds a little bit like you don't ever really get to rest. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh -huh. And I think that's why a lot of times if if I need to shut my head down, I'll just sleep. Like I'll just go for a 20 minute cat nap or an hour cat nap and just re-energize because my energy is so drained. Mm, got it. So there comes a point where you're just like, like, how do you fit that in? Actually, I'm curious. What what is the, you know, the the sort of rule that allows you to justify going and getting some rest? Uh, because my eyes just don't stay open. Got it. So it's like, <laughs> like okay, I literally my just I'm like a little robot. Down. I'm just yeah. I just <laughs> <laughs> got it. Mm -hmm. Only when I'm at home, though, like I obviously I'm not going to go grocery shopping and just lay down and, you know, but I mean, it's just it's when I'm in a space of my quiet time and I'll be at home by myself and I'm not out doing things. It just like my body just says, oh, my God, there's a little ounce of peace there. Just take it. Mm. Got it. So it's like peace in general sounds like it's pretty scarce. Yes. Uh-huh. Got it. Any other costs that you're present to? Um, well, besides, I mean, both Gary and I work like that. So, I mean, relationship-wise, we, 
the time that we do spend together, it's, you know, it's awesome, but it's not. And I think that's what excites me about the pub because we get to work together and I get to see him more than two hours in a day. Mm. Uh, got it. It's, it's kind of like inside the structure, since you always have to work, which is kind of what I'm hearing, like got to be working, otherwise you suck. Mm -hmm. Then that doesn't leave a lot of room for relationship. So you've kind of created this really, in a way, quite a brilliant solution, which is like, well, work together. Because yeah. then at least we get to have relationship. Yeah. At least more so than what would otherwise be allowed inside this paradigm. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. How is that? Like you guys have been working on this together for a couple of weeks. Like how, well, how is. So we've been doing this now for since June. So together, because yeah. we worked with, um, together, but it's been, it's been great. We, you know, like we were on the same, same page of goals. We sat down and talked about what we wanted for that. And, you know, but it's, it's great. We're just, he has his thing. I do my thing, but we still in passing high five, touching the bomb, whatever it needs to be. Right. And yeah. Mm. Didn't sound that great as you were sharing. That. <laughs> Each to their own Adam. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I think what I mean is, uh, your, when, um, the way, energetically that felt to me was if someone was like it's great yeah I'm like it's great rather so than like oh my god it's fucking amazing it's so cool and right. and i want to be clear i'm not saying there's a right way and and i actually really do acknowledge you for what you have created created mm -hmm. but i also i just want to offer you that reflection like i noticed as you shared that it was great it mm -hmm. it felt a little um uh I guess conciliatory, you know, like, oh, it's it's great. Yeah. And I I completely agree with you in that aspect. And I so my my Can I feeling pause you for a sec, Chrissy. Yeah. What is it you're agreeing with? I because I just want to be clear, all I'm doing is reflecting how it occurred. My, my lack of um energy on the great. Because okay, it's it. like I I love being around Gary, working with him. We've done other projects together. It like that truly is, is cool that we can work together and, you know, not kill each other with, I've seen some couples do. Right. Yes. And in saying that there is um, this lifestyle that we don't mind doing, which is working and everything like that. But, and I will say, but because this first year we have committed to really learning the business and creating something so that the next year's coming or further for that we don't have to be as full on steadfast and being there all these hours doing what we want because we want a lifestyle outside of it. Right. And so that is, it's kind of like a sacrifice, I guess, in, in some sense to create something this big and this large at scale to in a year, two years down the way that we get to fulfill the goals that we want to do, which is being able to travel, taking time away, taking two or three months off, being able to, um, you know, do my coaching business more than, than do the, the, that, that side of the business. Right. So it's, and that's just what I'm trying to balance is how do I keep my, coaching business from coming becoming stale while I'm doing this and whether that's one or two clients at a time and just kind of trickle that in to keep me whichever staying in in with my own coach and all of that kind of stuff it's just how does that all look and yeah so that's kind of where I've been been playing hmm to speak to these people again okay say well, hi to them for me I can't you, yeah what up people <laughs> so where we are in this conversation first of all is the um well chrissy you've had this experience too like there's always the thing we bring and then there's what you could call the context or the belief or the underlying story 
the, or the, probably the truest way is like the way reality occurs for whoever we're in conversation with. And so for you, Chrissy, the way reality occurs is kind of like, you have to work a lot of hours to be successful. And then let's just fill that out one step further. Once you're successful, then what will happen? And I'm not talking like <laughs> realistically, I'm talking inside that story. So what is the extension of that story? What will happen once I'm successful? Mm -hmm. What's the promise of this story? Um, I honestly don't know. Because in like what I felt right there, like, I mean, we, we want to go travel. We want to do all this. But then I'm thinking, I'll just come back and work more because that's all I know how to do. Right. Well, you're, you're like a little, yeah. So we're always, we're kind of in, we're pulling this up out of the water. I always think of it like an iceberg. So there's the water here and we can see the top of it. But all of this massive meaty part below is really what dictates yeah. how effective our efforts to move the iceberg are. Yeah. If we just push at the top part, it kind of like tips in the water. It doesn't really move forward much. And so, um, we're kind of bringing it up out of the water. And then there's a part of you that's like, great, let me fix that. Or like, oh my God, you can kind of see the bankruptcy of this a little bit. So I'm going to just offer you what I heard you say is, uh, I have to work a lot of hours to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then once I'm successful, I can travel, I can have time away and I can do the thing that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? Well, it doesn't sound right, but it's what I said. <laughs> When you, when you say it back to me, it doesn't sound good at all. Like, that's bullshit. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. But, like, at least in terms of, like, yes, it's, it's great. We can see this story is starting to get a little bankrupt. Like, oh, yeah. that doesn't quite work. But can yeah. you, does that kind of fit with the story that we're looking at? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So what we're really doing here is first getting present to the story. No amount of balance. You and I could figure out, like, the perfect number of hours to like rigidly make you work and then yeah. you get shot with an electric taser every time yeah. you work a second over that right and what are you going to be left feeling as a result of controlling your hours and having balance inside of the story i have to work a lot of hours to be successful yeah it, it just like it, it'll give me anxiety <laughs> yeah and and i would imagine possibly feeling like a failure true very much so. Right. I because mean, the story that's how I feel as soon as I stop working or stop before eight or whichever. Right. Or, and, and eventually or, it'll be or, eight yeah. 15 and then eight 30. And yeah. then like, Oh, if only I could work enough hours to get in front of this story. Right. And so what everyone, what all of us, what I, what Chrissy, what you watching, what all of us try to do is fix this or try to win the game that's inside the story. Mm -hmm. And so we could like, okay, I have to work a lot of hours to be successful, but then once I'm successful, I can have these sort of things. Um, and we're kind of at that point now, Chrissy, where you and I are bankrupting a little bit and we're just yeah. getting a sense of like, what does life look like inside of the story? How does this show up? Mm -hmm. So can I offer you a, uh, I'm present to our time. Yes. We have about 10 minutes before we start to wind down. Yes. I offer you at least one practice, and then I'd like to work with you a little bit more and get a sense of what you see you might practice. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, well, actually, let's start with you. So far in this conversation, what are you present to? What's there for you? I'm not as heavy. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Like I, yeah. So I was my shoulders felt like they were by my ears when I first started. And yeah, until you said, can you take a breath with me? But I'm, I'm like, I'm just not as heavy. And I think I'm present to, um, I think just knowing, like I've always known that I'm, I wouldn't say a workaholic, but I just, I like to work or, well, I don't like to work, but I, you know, that's, but there's just certain things of me that I just, it's the presence of just allowing myself to be okay with not having to do something all the time. Hmm. What would you have to be willing to be with in your life to allow that possibility? Quiet. Is it 
quiet that you're avoiding? No, because that's not true, maybe. No, because I can sit with myself and, you know, be with myself and all of that. I think it's a purpose. Like I just, you know, like I'm, I'm, if I'm not doing something, I feel like I'm not doing something for others. If that makes sense. And how does that leave you? What, what's the conclusion about yourself then? Like, oh, I'm not doing something, ergo, I'm not doing something for others. And therefore I am, or I am not. Maybe disappointing others. Disappointment. Yeah. Anything else? I just feel lazy if I'm not. Like, I, I really do just feel. Yeah, like, I just, I just feel like. It's like telling, like allowing myself not to be who I am for others and for myself. Uh, let me make, let me see if I got it. Allowing, say that again. So it's, it's like, I am who I, I am. Like, that's how I've, I, I didn't realize until this moment, maybe that I create all this work. I just figured I'm just a worker. That's just, you know, we're born like in the bee colony. You're either a worker or a queen kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was born into a working family. And so if I'm not giving in that sense, then who am I? Yeah. And what is the answer to that question? I don't know. Yeah. But I have a hunch that they're so like you kind of pose that like a like a statement, you know, if right. I don't do that, then who am I? But I'm going to invite you to like your your fear has an answer to that question. Oh, that guy. Fear. Fear's a man, hey. Again with yeah. the patriarchy. <laughs> totally a man. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just wouldn't be anything like, well, I'm sure I would, but it, you know, it's just that. If I'm not doing, oh, then I'm just being. Hmm. I just wouldn't feel like I have a purpose or that I'm yeah I don't know Adam well I think you're doing amazing and and it's tough right like our we don't want to touch this stuff I don't know if you saw Heather working through this same similar sort of thing so like I'm going to make a couple of assertions sure. the first is like our story gets put together to protect us from having to be with something some experience, some story about ourselves. Um, and, and then we live into that. We live from that story right. because then we don't have to be with that thing. Yeah. And so I think you're like right up against it. And it's just like, what? So without purpose, like you without purpose would make you what? Like if you were being witnessed by someone, maybe your parents or whoever installed this innocently trying to do their best what would they conclude? Like, oh, well, then you're. Yeah, I. You have no idea how much I want that answer to come to my head right now. Mm. Maybe worthless. I don't know. Like, it's not something my parents said to me, but. Do you ever feel that way? No. I wouldn't say worthless, but I sometimes I feel like I'm just um, see lazy comes to mind because my dad would always say, "Don't be so lazy." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing um, awesome work. I'm yes. really inspired by you being willing to take a look at this and to give yourself the gift of a breath, which you could even do right now. Yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll do the same for you. <laughs> So 
I have a few things for you. Sure. Uh, I loved your metaphor of like, oh, I'm a worker bee in the colony. Yeah. Imagine if you were a queen who was raised her whole life <laughs> being told she was a worker bee. Right. I think that's what I feel like I'm trying to discover because that's where I don't feel like I fit in the working bees society and not to displace anybody who's a worker bee because yeah. I have been raised that way, but I really yeah. feel up there. And you learn to do it better than anyone else, right? Yeah. Which speaks to your strength. It's like, damn, you're not even a worker and you're kicking these worker bees ass. You're putting them to shame. And it's like, oh, but that's not the point of who you are. Right. What, what would you, what practice would you give that queen? I was going to say, what came to my head is work harder. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll become a queen. Yeah. You'll travel everywhere and you'll have time away. And... Yeah. I, I just like, I feel like I get, could get thrown a bone here because I have no idea what I would. I got some bones. Yeah. Throw want some them. bones? Yes, please. Great. Are you able to write practices? Got it. Nice. Got the post it. So, um, the first thing, and this is for everyone watching too, whenever we have a belief, for the most part, it hangs out back here, dictates our actions, and all we really get to be present to is the world created by those actions. So, we don't even see that the belief is what controls everything, really. We're just like, well, here's the world. Like, if you look into the world, Chrissy, you're going to see the demand for you to be a worker bee. Yeah. Fair? True. You've created a world set up for that, That's right? True. So what we want to do is start to notice how we are creating the reality of our belief because that at least lets us start to bring it here so we can look from, we can see with the full clarity of what's actually going on rather than just seeing this half of the picture right. and, and having this stay hidden. So make sense? Yeah. So I want you to, well, I'm going to invite you. I, I want you, but it doesn't matter what I want. <laughs> um, the first practice would be just notice how pervasive and how continual and how this belief shows up. Okay. So look for it everywhere. Uh, it sounds second. It sounds like this story protects you from having to be with feeling lazy. Oh yeah. And so the bad news is that's the gate through which getting to travel, taking time away, fully empowering and being in your coaching business. Mm -hmm. That's the gate through which you're going to have to walk. Yeah. Or that's my assertion. It's my hunch. So you might notice that fear of like that feeling of being lazy show up. It's almost like what happens right now is as soon as that fear shows up, meshed in with it is the immediate reaction, which is like, go and do more stuff. And so it doesn't really occur like, oh my God, there's the fear. Oh my God, some space. Now the stimulus, now I go do the thing. It probably occurs more like time to do more stuff, mm -hmm. time to do more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's I would exactly invite... my world. <laughs> right. And hey, to your credit, you kind of empower this. You're like, all right, I can, it's great. I can find a way to do more stuff and be with my, all of that good stuff. Um, so what I'm going to invite you to do is to notice, like to see if you can separate thing, these things just that much. Okay. So like practice, the way you can do that is practice being with the feeling of being lazy a little bit. Okay. Can you be 1% more lazy this week? <laughs> oh my God. I will try. I uh -huh. will. Yeah. What does 1% lazy look like? That is a question you can be in. I'm going to write that down. So I'm actually going to up the ante and not numb the, cause I can be lazy with numbness of, you know, a Netflix 
thing or whichever. So I'll just yeah. sit with lazy. Yeah, really great catch. Yeah. Because Netflix or drinking or pot or, you know, most of our numbing strategies, the way I think of them is they put stuff on pause. Yeah. So we don't actually have to be with it. We pause it That's and then right. it, it feels better than yeah. being, it's like a painkiller. Yeah. It alleviates the pain, but it doesn't actually heal anything. Right. So love it. Yeah. Just maybe even just lie on your back for 30 minutes. Yeah. Now the ultimate truth here is laziness is made up. So there's a deeper place to practice, which is really like coming from a, creating a new belief where it's like, it's not even being lazy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to empower this a different way. But right yeah, now. I can actually go for a walk sometimes and feel lazy because I'm going for a walk. So yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And so ultimately where we want to get you is not a life where you're just like, I'm willing to be lazy, but it's a life right. where you stop even relating to this stuff as lazy at all. And you're like, I'm going to go fill my cup. Yeah. I'm going to go and ensure that I'm of best use to Gary and to my clients. And I'm going to revel in that. But at least where we are right now is the belief is still quite there for you. So we're picking right. like kind of a lower gradient to practice. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Yeah. I feel like way better. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would think you think like one? I... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no I was please, just going to yeah. say, I think that's what I attached to the word lazy. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Well, just everything that I wasn't working on. So if I, you know, did meditation, it'd be lazy. If I did this, it'd be lazy. So it's right. just what I attach to it. Which is hilarious because then you can do those things so as not to be lazy, which right. does not at all. It just turns them into more work, right? Yeah. How was your meditation? Oh, I sweated and I grinded the fuck through it and, and I did it. Yeah feel horrible. I'm more yeah. stressed out than ever, but I'm doing meditation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it's not working. Um, so one last thing. Mm -hmm. um, let me just check in. Practice like just what would you be creating? How would life look if laziness wasn't even a conversation? So never mind what you have to do. Never not mind not being lazy or being productive or any of that. Like just how would you like to like, how would you like life to look now? And I invite you to get specific with this. So how many hours a week are you working on coaching? How many hours a week are you working on the pub? How many hours a week are you meditating? How much sleep do you get? Like really, we've been looking a lot at this because honestly, I would say you're a little attached to, to this, which is totally okay. That's, yeah. that's life. That's how we, yeah. because you're getting something from this, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, like you create right. amazing results from here. Yeah. Practice looking over here. And just imagining that possibility, because that's what will allow it'll it'll um it'll just unstick this a little bit. Right. Yeah. And would you be willing to come back and share in the comment what you uh, like some of what you saw what might be possible? Yes. A little bit of accountability. Come back in a week and and put it in here. Yeah. Awesome. If Heather's watching, she's like, crap, I know that I made a promise to do something like that too. I got to go. And it's great. I'm getting two birds with one stone. I'm bouncing it off you onto her. <laughs> cool. I'll let you finish writing. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you see you might take on, practice, look for, avoid? Um. No, I, like I, um, in a weird way, I'm just, I'm kind of enlightened to just work with that because I think the, the word lazy had me working harder where I really, there's nothing lazy about me. 
it's the most hilarious fear <laughs> for you to have. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the nature of our fears. Like, right. I'm worried about looking stupid. And people are like, you yeah. idiot. Yeah, that's the stupidest person I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, great. Thanks for calling me an idiot. But yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Nice. No, I appreciate that. Um, awesome. Anything else you want to share before we kind of wind down this part of the conversation, then we'll shift to a debrief. No, I, um, I, I feel, I feel good with that. Adam. Nice. I feel good. Is that better? Yeah. Well, you actually do. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want you to know you do feel good in this yeah. moment to me, yeah. Yeah. uh, not from like bad or, or mm -hmm. anything like that. You just, you feel really good here. Mm -hmm. I do feel lighter. Yes. Yeah, you do. Mm. Uh, well, I'd like to, can I finish by acknowledging you, Chrissy? Please. Um, wow. I love, I love how committed you are to making a difference in the world. And I love how tireless and strong you are. And I really acknowledge, um, it's amazing to me, like the queen bee Physically, this description is not about you, but energetically it is. So the queen bee is like not cut to do a worker bee's job. Queen bee's got like that big bulbous ass and I don't know much about bee culture, obviously. <laughs> the intended doesn't acknowledge that. But like her job's not to work hard. And, and yet that you do so much, you know, kind of like a little bit against the grain of who you are. Um. It's amazing. It speaks to me how much you care. And I really acknowledge you for the tremendous courage that you are and how much courage it requires to be willing to, to step back a little bit from this stuff and to, to lay off the, the incredible amount of doing and, and be like, okay, I'm willing to actually experience and face and trust that there might be something on the other side of this. That, that requires a hero's courage and it's, it is not without fear and it is not without consequences, you know, like, as you can imagine, there'll probably be consequences if you start to do a little bit less because you've created a world that relies on you to do so much. Mm -hmm. And I really want to honor you for honoring yourself. You know, for me, that's the biggest part about this is like, the practice of loving yourself so deeply so you can bring that love to other people in its fullness. Mm -hmm. And that's really tough. Thanks for um, the way you've shown up here. Like, I just know people are going to get so much from you being willing to show up the way you've shown up and like really modeling what it is to be in the vulnerability of being coach and client. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Adam. Uh -huh. Thank you. I was, I need a better segue now, like an intermission or something rather than us just being like, well, you got acknowledged Had this deep conversation. Let's talk shop. Um, how is your bladder first? Do you need a break or are you good to go for another 20 minutes? I'm good. Awesome. Okay. Um, I may experience mild incontinence in my sixties as a result of hanging on for 20 minutes, but I'm willing to make that, that, uh, <laughs> That sacrifice. Uh, catheter coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I care so much about my clients. I will pee for them. Okay. Um, so what what are you present to? Like, I know it's a little challenging because you're kind of in it. But if if mm. we kind of pull back and and just be with it, like, what what are you present to? What what's there for you? In in a whole, I just. Um... It just a whole lot of lightness. I mean, of course, there's a lot that I started with on the call because it's live. It's, it's, you know, the judgment maybe from others or whichever. And, um, but it's just, once we got into it, I was just, it's the, um, it, it was the emotion that has been even that little amount of release. And I'm, there's that emotion that I've been holding on to just around not working hard enough and even though i'm working myself to the bone this kind of thing right and so for that just to allow that little bit of release to say oh, okay so i'm not being lazy as silly as that sounds and i mean even now 
for me to call myself lazy or to label it, it's kind of, like you said, it's kind of comical. It's just like, it's like that one, one minute where I sit down maybe for an hour instead of an hour and a half or a, a half an hour for lunch. I'm just like, Oh, I'm being lazy. I got to get up and get going again. Right. And so it's just that, out of a lack of a better word, clarity on, mm-hmm. <laughs> on just, well, I think too, just how much, even though I do my work in my, in my own self and reading and everything, yeah. how much just somebody else's perspective put on to myself matters. And just speaking about it with somebody else in a way that is, um, well, there's, I just don't feel judged or judgment, which allows me to open up and be vulnerable in those things. And that's really what's true for me right now. Yeah, I'm, I love all of that. And I'm, there's a lot of things I want to share over here. Like, uh, I can see so much of your story in my story. Like, um, yeah, like working hard, you know, I'm really reliable to take, and I'm, I'm sure you are too, to, excuse me, to take the hard road. Be like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to do the hard work. And people are like, yo, Adam, there's like this easy, nice path over here. I'm like, no morons. What are you doing? Do the hard stuff. And they're like, okay, but you seem unpleasant and not happy. <laughs> like, no, through this, I will experience relaxation. And and one of the things I really uh, was present to was when, when you – this was a little bit of like when the story had just when I said, you know, you're a little attached. What I really mean is like the belief still has some power. Yeah. We're sharing. Um, I know we have to sacrifice, but once we do that for indeterminate insert indeterminate amount of years, yeah. <laughs> which will increase by one each year, uh, then we can travel, have time away. And the, one of the things I'm always looking for in people is, people I'm supporting um, is like the, I have to do X so that then eventually I can have the opposite of X. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How do I like, so it's like when people are um, well, my flavor of this is being really frantic and frustrated and, and like running through everything that I've got going on so that I can get it all done so that I can be peaceful and not have to do anything. Right. And it's funny because we get to the piece and we can't be with it because mm-hmm. it, because of the stories that we have about it. Oh, I'm lazy. Oh my God. And I have to do more work. And oh my God, why do I have to do all this work? Cause if oh, I need to get away from it and uh, it's challenging, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, what came up for me and it's simplistic and just because we invest in properties, we never, ever, ever say we can't afford something. We always come up with how can we afford something? And that's the same as what, I'm doing here it's just like well I want to travel how can we travel and I mean it's just putting that same spin on every aspect of our world really but I I couldn't see it Mm. yeah it's so compelling Mm. this stuff and so determinative you know our beliefs are there it it's if we really were able to see the full extent of how this actually gets created and unfortunately we're in it. So it's hard to see that, but it, it, we yeah. would be amazed at, at, um, at just how powerful we are. as. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I typed this in the comments, but everyone, please, anything you have to share, any questions for us, we'd be incredibly grateful. Um, Heather, Chris, uh, Heather says, Chrissy, thank you so much for your heart and willingness to be so real. I feel mm-hmm. you which I think is one of your greatest gifts, Chrissy, is letting people feel you. Mm. Um, be kind of a cool place for you to, to almost practice. Like, hey, how much do I feel myself in this moment? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. One of the other things I was going to say is anytime someone brings balance or clarity, <laughs> those are uh, kind of red flag words for me. Um, they're, they're such a great starting point. Right. But usually it's like, oh, if I could just get better work-life balance or better clarity or something like that. And, and it's, 
a sure sign like, oh, this would be the fix to the symptom of the belief underneath this. And so we have to like go down through those layers. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, did you experience any like, it didn't feel a lot, but was there at any point here where you were feeling resistance or um, like, oh, we're going in the wrong direction. I want to go in this direction. Or was there anything like that for you? No, the only Mm -hmm. resistance I had was to not like, cry and not be able to do that ugly cry and all that kind of stuff because there was one point where I stopped myself because I just I just knew that I would just go into like you know Bay would have to come and pat me on the shoulders (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, but it's just and it's just it's part of I mean it's just part of that um that release because I feel it so deeply right and so yeah yeah. Yeah. It is, a. it's a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and, and when, with all of that work, you can imagine there's a lot built up True. too. So, you know, like the dam comes down and it's like, Whoa, there's a lot we've got to yeah. sort of allow to clear out. Yeah. Often what happens with people is they, they let down this thing. And because we're not practiced, we, we, we don't, let it down a little bit. Like right. if you had a fart and you were like, I'm going to see if this smells really bad. I'm going to let a little bit out of it out. Right. We're not that practiced with it. So we just are like, away you go. And it yeah. floods the world. And we're like, Oh dear God, that was horrible. And then we build everything back up even tighter so that that's we right. cause the havoc. And right. yeah, that's kind of like the nature of Bambi legs. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm just going to make, oh yeah, I want to speak to how so much, this is a, I, I learned this from a man named Christopher McAuliffe, which is our job as coach really is to get people, then to coach people, and then to leave people. Mm-hmm. And um, all of these can be challenging. Uh, like early on, all of, I put all my attention and coach them. So I was like, Hey, how's it going? You'd tell me like, okay, Claire, I'd be like, great. Let's coach you right in the face. <laughs> and, uh, and like the challenge I think is like someone like you, Chrissy, especially would be like, great, here's hard work. Let's get on board with it. Yeah, that's right. Right. You're reliable in that space as am I. And, um, and so there's a lot of, it's so important that we really get someone because we don't know their world. We don't understand what the belief is. We have our thoughts and feelings about it. And, and like really being willing to slow down and be with someone, even, and especially when we feel the time limit, like, I don't know, do you ever have that experience when you're coaching someone where you're like, Oh my God, I'm still listening to them talk and the time's going off and ah, what are I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And then the flip side of it is leaving them, you know, and I'll share on, and in this conversation, there was, so much more. We could have made this a four hour conversation, right? And just kept going and going and going. And um, part of the hard part about coaching is being willing to let people sit in the mess. Mm. Or if it's not a mess, the discomfort maybe is a better way of it not being resolved because that's as much a part of living a rich life as anything else. If you, if you really, I think, if you really want to be if you want to be in the experience of the abundance of life, you're going to have to learn to be with the mystery and the, the non-resolution of life. And, uh, and I hate that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think too, as, as you'd said earlier, solution-based thinking, you always like, it's always, there has to be a solution. Totally. So sitting in my shit is just, I need to wipe it up, you know, like it's just, so that's, it's hard that, that has been one of my biggest challenges is just allowing myself to sit and shit for a while. Yeah. It yeah. takes so much courage on the part of both the coach and the client. Right. You know, that's really a, a, a huge moment of intimacy, like that's mm-hmm. co-created, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Heather says, I don't have any questions, but I want to thank both of you for the gifts you brought today. Mm-hmm. So you're welcome, Heather. And thank you. Awesome. Thanks for being with us all the way through. Really appreciate you. Um, anything that you'd like to share by way of finishing, uh, this conversation today, Chrissy? No, I just want to, um, thank you for the gift of being coach. Mm. Thanks. This was fun. Hey, pretty fucking good at it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. I, I so appreciate that. I will share, 
uh, not by way of dismissing that, but just by giving the full picture. So one, I really appreciate that. Two, I woke up this morning. I was like, why the fuck am I doing a stupid fucking fuck fuck? There's like 38 fucks in there. Coaching call today and oh, I don't feel like it. And um, the thing I love about this work is it happens in partnership with life, not once we've resolved life. And so right. thanks for like joining me, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on for both of us. I know we both have a lot going on. Um, you are a coach. Uh, if people resonate with you, can they reach out to you? Is there somewhere they should go and learn anything about you? Yeah. Um, I have my website. It's smileinsideout.com. Mm -hmm. And I also have leadership performance coach, Chrissy Thompson on Facebook. Cool. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if they want to come to your pub and uh, get coached while on their way to get <laughs> drunk, where's that? <laughs> yeah. It's on Vancouver Island on the other side of where Adam lives. So it's um, on Sprout Lake and it's uh, fishing.coastboats.com. Cool. And the uh, website will be getting changed. <laughs> That's on the to-do list. <laughs> gonna do that too. No, I'm gonna be lazy first. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. yeah, we'll expect to see like the old uh, guy, the animated GIF of the guy in construction. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the only thing I'm gonna share slash plug is oh, two things actually. One, uh, if you are not already a listener. Listen to Get Lit. It's my podcast about leadership and it is rad AF. It's usually about 20 minutes and I cover some distinction about leadership, usually one that's counterintuitive, much like a lot of I find this work is. And um, if you are not subscribed, come to my website and sign up for my mailing list. I give you a whole bunch of cool goodies as soon as you do that, infographics and stuff like that. And then usually a post every Friday, which I just realized I have not sent one out this week, but that's okay. Um, and I promise I won't spam you. I'll just give you my best shit every week. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, thanks Evan and Heather and Rachel and Karen. Who else can I thank for being here? Uh, Timothy, thank you everyone that checked in for whatever amount you did. We appreciate you guys. It makes this conversation more than if it was just two people uh, talking. Thanks Chrissy. See you Thank soon. Thank you, Adam. Okay, cheers. Bye, guys.